So I've been sitting here in my garden for the last couple of minutes just watching our bees forage among what would essentially be a weed and something that one person might consider getting rid of. I'm not talking about dandelion. You guys know that I have a thing for the lesser quality of plants as a source of pollen. Those plants have so much to offer and we are very, very comfortable with letting our weeds grow. And I think that that's a great way to start when it comes to people who don't necessarily want to become beekeepers, but they want to support beekeepers. Let your weeds grow. It is amazing just being completely lazy, but helping, helping really support the pollinators that are in your area. I have been trying to catch the bees land on this particular flower. However, my luck is not exactly I'm not exactly having the best luck as a bee watcher <laughs> right now. We're just now into March and weeks away from our spring, but there are some things that are blooming and at least right now with what I can see, I know that we have a few dandelions blooming. This is where that connection between bees, pollen source, weeds <laughs> and flowers that not only benefit the bees, but also can benefit you medicinally. One of the weeds that I found growing here in my garden area, just growing wild, some in my beds that I still need to tend to, but basically on the ground. And it's pretty predominant in this area. The name of it is Cardamony hirsuta. The other name that you might hear is called Hairy Bittercrest. It is an early bloom that the bees actually really benefit from. Along with the other plants that are starting to bloom in this area, what I can personally see bloom are the purple dead nettle, uh, I know henbit is getting ready to start blooming. For tree-wise, I believe maple is starting to bloom. Now, I haven't physically gone up and laid eyes on it, but we are right on that cusp between everything just coming alive and spring hopping. But right now, seeing the things that are blooming in front of me are extremely reassuring. I do know that there are some ornamental plants that are blooming as well in this area, which I think boxwood is in that category. But what I can see that are essentially weeds are what I'm talking about. Before I start talking about the plants, I'm gonna take you guys and show you what I'm talking about. So you're not just picking up any random weed and using it medicinally. That is hairy bittercrust and it's actually edible, all of it the whole parts, all of it's edible. It's in the mustard family and it's loaded with vitamin C, antioxidants, beta carotenes, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur containing compounds that actually boost your immune system and is even said to help prevent cancer. It's pretty amazing that it's actually considered a weed and many people would get rid of it. But as a beekeeper, we welcome it. And as an herbalist, I'm actually starting to appreciate some of the lesser plants in our area. That adorable little violet colored flower is actually bird eye speedwell. You can actually harvest it and turn it into an herbal tea, if you, especially if you have a nasty cough and you need to get whatever gunk you have in your chest out as it is an expectorant and it will help alleviate that. It also has the anti-inflammatory properties to it. It's also really good for liver detox and helping you just kind of flush the toxins out of your system. I definitely don't mind letting these weeds grow. And I can tell you, I don't think my girls mind either. Let me show you why. I had to put the bee veil on because the other day I came out here with long hair and one of my bees got tangled up in my hair and that is just not fun, okay? Like, I don't mind being stung. Uh, I just am not a big fan of the bees getting tangled up in my hair. But watch, look at this.
I'm completely blown away with all of the girls and what they are bringing in. I cannot wait. I want to go for a walk and I want to go see every little thing that is blooming so that I can see and understand what they're bringing in and create my own personal log for it. And then again, how can I use what would essentially be a weed or just growing <laughs> randomly? How can I use that medicinally? How can I use that as a health source for me? You know, if it is good for the bees and the bees are bringing in pollen, you know, there's got to be something to that. There has to be something to that. I cannot wait to do another hive inspection with you guys. I cannot wait to share with you what it looks like. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put a picture. If you guys are new to my channel and you guys haven't really done many hive inspections with me or if that's what brought you here, I'm going to show you guys one of my favorite pictures of pollen that has been packed into cells and show you how absolutely stunning these creatures are. truly blown away at how God has designed these amazing little creatures and how they work in our area and how they live and thrive and I'm excited that I get to share that with you guys. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. <laughs>